Hey everybody, it is Ed. I did a video, a few videos back, where I had talked about Jackie Kahane's record, Requiem for Elvis, and then I did a reaction video to the record, because I had never heard it before. So I thought it would be fun to do the reaction, and I did. And I didn't realize how heavy it was going to be. So if you haven't seen that video, go back and check it out if you would like. Uh, purpose of this video is I got a very, very interesting email from one of my viewers in response to that video. And I had contacted said viewer. Uh, said viewer does not want to be identified, but I had contacted them back and I said I think you made some really interesting and and great points and very well articulated and if you don't mind I would really like to read your email so then that person responded back and said well before you do so please allow me to make some changes and or edits and those changes slash edits have been made and the email has been sent. And like I mentioned, this person has asked not to be identified. So I am going to respect that. But they did allow me or give me permission to read their email. So without further ado, here we go. I'm going to do my best to not stammer, um, ha, ah, all that other stuff. I'm going to do my best. Bear with me, girl. Comment on Jackie Kahane's Requiem for Elvis. Poor Elvis was receiving criticism since he first stepped into the limelight throughout his entire life and sadly still to this day. No other entertainer gets so much unfair criticism and scrutiny. Funny how he didn't seem to receive as much criticism when he was performing on the Louisiana Hayride through the South, which was supposed to be so much more puritanical. Uh, Purana, mm, oh my God! Why can't I say this word right now? Puritanical. Ready? Puritanical. So embarrassed. And racially prejudiced than the North. Let me reread that and see if I can get through it. Funny how he didn't seem to receive as much criticism when he was performing on the Louisiana Hayride through the South, which was supposed to be. Much more, much more puritanical and racially prejudiced than the North. I stink. I'm sorry, but I'm going to continue. He really started to receive criticism once he did the Hound Dog performance on the Milton Berle show in New York, where the rest of the country got to really be exposed to him. It seemed like he was accepted more in the South. No wonder Elvis couldn't wait to get away from New York and get back to the South. It is true that when he performed at Russwood Park, July 4th, 1956, just days after appearing on Steve Allen's show that Elvis uh, proclaimed, quote, you know, these people in New York aren't going to change me none. I'm going to show you what the real Elvis is like tonight, unquote. Both white and black teenagers a attended that benefit concert. And I wish more people today would acknowledge the positive impact Elvis has had on society and that he brought all races and nationalities together. Then in parentheses, it says, source of Elvis quote is from scottymoore.net website. So the quote that was, uh, yeah. All right, anyway. I wonder if Jackie was just referring to critics saying Elvis was just copying his forebearers of black blues music or white country and white and black gospel music as well as black blues music. We have to remember that everything was segregated in the 1950s, including churches and music. Country Western and gospel music was only popular in the South. The Northern states, especially California and the Northwest, were very snobby toward hillbilly country music. It wasn't played on radio stations in the Northern states. I read that the Southern churches didn't like that he blended his gospel roots into his music to create rock and roll, which they called the devil's music. They thought Elvis was the evil and felt he dishonored gospel. I think that the northern states also thought gospel music was only sung in black churches. And then in parentheses, the media to this day fosters this idea. Every time there is a gospel choir singing on some award show, it is always a black choir. And then end parentheses. 
People forget that gospel was sung in white churches too when the black and white churches were segregated. I learned the white gospel was called Southern gospel and the black gospel was called spirituals. The Southern gospel was derived from the Scottish immigrants who came to America, which many settled in the South. Elvis had Scottish roots. He was a mix of predominantly Irish, Scottish, with also German, English, French, and Cherokee Indian heritage. It seems like Elvis got hate from all sides since the beginning, except from teenagers. All races and ethnicities of teenagers loved Elvis. There's video of Elvis at the airport returning from the army in March 1960. Throngs of fans were there to greet him. Some fans are shown interviewed and we see black and white kids together there in 1960. Two black girls are interviewed and are so adorable in their fangirling over Elvis. This togetherness and openly interviewing this mix of people for TV would have been unheard of in the early 1950s. It's amazing that Elvis was as successful as he was, given that he got so much criticism and had so many obstacles to overcome. It's a testament to how talented, genuine, humble, generous, determined, and kind he was to preserve and reach the heights of success he achieved. Jackie's story about the plane is interesting. I read Elvis bought the planes out of necessity because flying commercially and transporting by tour bus just wasn't as effective as, as having your own plane. It was certainly not to be shown, uh, not to be a show off. Elvis didn't own any planes until 1975 when he, when he had bought his first plane, the Delta Convair 880, that he named the Lisa Marie and then the Hound Dog uh, Lockheed Jetstar also in 1975. It also made sense finally to have his own planes to transport him and his entourage during tours and also the second plane for the entire band and backup singers. TCB, can't say who, but regardless, I I just thought there were some really interesting points that were made in there, and I just felt it should be shared with other Elvis fans. So hence, that is the purpose of this video. So again, if you guys want to email me, um, it's edthekingscourt at gmail.com. Feel free. Uh, and... I, you know, again, I just thought some really good points were being made here. So I would like to know what you think. So if you would like, leave me a comment. I do appreciate you all watching. And as always, please be good to yourselves and be good to each other. Take care.